Everybody stand up and welcome the morning. Today is our musicians, Sally and Jamie, and all the way from Kirkland and Woodby Island, Miss Johanna. Yay! Uh, Cindy is going to be the board member of the week, and uh, a prayer chaplain to be named later will be available. And, of course, our technology guru, who makes all this beautiful stuff happen, Mark. Yay. And I'm your last minute platform person, Nora. Yay. And so now, uh, Jamie and Sally will lead us in our congregational heart song. Joy into the heavens, and 
it returns to me. I send my peace into the heavens. I send my peace over the sea. I send my peace into the heavens. And it returns to me. Joanna Gabriel must have brought it to us. 
So, well, we're, we're thankful for however it came. So yes. thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so we just want to remind everybody we are live streaming. So keep conversations down, especially during the candle lighting and paper burning, because it gets nice and quiet during that period. As Nora mentioned, we have a, a monthly men's group. It did have to be canceled this past month, unfortunately, but it's on the calendar for Saturday, April 14th at 9 a.m. There is a sign-up sheet out in the uh, fellowship area if you're interested in attending. Uh, we want to remind everyone that we have prayer requests in the pockets of the chairs. You can fill those out, put them in an offertory bag, or turn them into the little box here, and our chaplains will take care of that for you. Uh, please stop by the table in the fellowship area. We have a lot of different sign-up sheets for our upcoming craft fair. We're starting to get something organized for a fall holiday craft fair thing, and we may start doing things monthly to start building something to do with that. So plans are in the works. We'll be meeting on that shortly. Uh, let's see. We also have the monthly astrology meeting in April. We have a sign-up sheet for our eblast newsletter if you want to get the information as it comes along, different events, things we're trying to promote. Sign up for that. We do have the photography club meeting, and like Nora said, it doesn't matter what you shoot with, whether it's your phone or you know a, a digital camera, anything in between, or if you're just interested on what, what it takes to take a good picture, please join us. We have a lot of fun. And then there may be other things on the table too. You never know, so check it out. Uh, we do have our uh, family fun night coming up on March 24th, and yes, we did have a good time and a lot of laughs and giggles. So it's just an opportunity to just socialize and hang out. So if you're interested, please join us then. Uh, we do want to mention that the celebration of life for our dear Donald Cowdery, or Grandpa Don, as most of us called him, that will be on Saturday, April 21st at 1 p.m. at the Disabled American Veterans Hall, which is on Burwell. There's going to be a potluck reception following the memorial, and Reverend Joanna Gabriel is officiating. Ooh. So yay! Which Grandpa Don, that just, you know, you just know he's going to be, absolutely, That's what he wanted. Yeah, that would be absolutely, yeah, yeah, so see, he put in his request, he already was set, you know, he knew, so, <laughs> and bless him for that, so that we are, we're thrilled. There's going to be a potluck reception following the memorial, so please bring a dish that you can share, and maybe in a disposable container, so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff afterwards. Uh, his wife, Florence, has an allergy to flowers, so in lieu of flowers, she believes that Don would prefer any donations be made to the Disabled American Veterans or the Washington Talking Book and Braille Library. So if you want more information on that, let me know. I can send you to a website or um, that's where the service will be is at the Disabled American Veterans. So they do a lot of really good work for our veterans. There's links to both of those on our website. Ah, yes, and there are links to both of those uh, organizations on our website. And there's a board meeting today, so we'll let you know what comes of that at on next Sunday. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hey. I'm going to light the Christ candle, which represents the Christ light within each of us. Okay, you need some help? No, this is a, a different one. We went through this last week. Well, this is a different one. The other one's... Because <laughs> you have to okay. both push and push and push. You have to do two things at one time. Yeah, that's, that's a, a new one. I brought it in. So that's new. So well, new could you... Oh, maybe you know how to operate. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the secret handshake. <laughs> right, it takes two ways to do that. I think that. we were talking about this technology thing going wrong before service. <laughs> yes, there's a match when you need yep. it. Yep, a couple of times. You have to hold your mouth. I don't know why they make those things. They put a child through those things. Yep. And now we'll say our <coughs> mission statement. We are welcoming communities supporting our original quest for spiritual truth. And our invocation? There is one presence and one power active in the universe and in my life. God the good omnipotence. 
Okay, and then we're going to have a brief <laughs> meet and greet, and remembering that we have socialization after ser after service, so that any extended conversation can please be hold off till then. I didn't get a chance to catch you last time. Uh, and I, 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 you know, you made a point of mentioning your idea. And I wanted to find out why. Why? Yeah, three times I'm like, and then you were driving away. I was wondering, is there something else besides that you wanted to tell me? Oh, yeah. Well, she wants to tell you. Just a wonderful, beautiful, very exciting. I'll have a hug. You got a haircut too? Yeah, I got my chalk off. I can't stand it. If it gets down past the neck. Hey, you. Boy, I wish your wife was here. Well, she works. She works. She works. She works. No, but she works too. No, she works hard. Oh, okay. Oh, she didn't get much to do. She didn't get much to do. None of us did. There you are. I didn't see you last week. No, you sure did. That's okay. Well, it must have been here. I was like, you were. I said, where is she? I'll give you a picture for bringing it Yeah, those two are laying down here. No, it's a different one. It's a different one. It's a different one. It's a different one. I have to go. I have to go. I had them drop me off at church, and I just ran to you. That's okay. That's totally okay. 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 And if you give it away, give it away, give it away, love will If you give it away, you end up having more. If you give it away, it's just like a magic pill. Just give it away, it's just like a magic penny. Hold it tight and you won't have any. Lend it in and have so many. They'll roll all over the floor. So love is something if you give it away. Give it away. Give it away. Love is something if you give it away. You end up having more. So let's go raise and break the day. And if there's a piper, we can pay. Love is something if you give it away. You end up having more. You end up having more. Today's daily word is sacred service. I am spiritually fulfilled when my unique gifts are dedicated to the service of others. I am a spiritual being expressing an unlimited human form. That expression is a combination of talents and gifts that are unique to me. As I learn to express those gifts, my life becomes progressively easier and more rewarding. But I soon recognize that focusing on the quality of my own life is too limiting for the spiritual being I truly am. Whenever my experience feels, the challenge, feels challenging, I turn my attention outward to find a way of service to others. This is a spiritual paradox that only can, <clears throat> that only by being of service to others, I most fully express my unique gifts for myself. I'm going to say that sentence again because that one really hit me this morning earlier. It is a spiritual paradox that only by being of service to others, I most fully express my unique gifts for myself. In serving others, I am fulfilling my highest spiritual purpose, and the energy of love which, with which I serve 
becomes my own life experience. From 1 Peter 4, verse 10, like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Today I am spiritually fulfilled when my unique gifts are dedicated to the service of others. And God blesses us. Amen. <laughs> hey, this is a uh, song that we used to do when Rosella was here. I think she introduced it to us. I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing heaven today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing love today. I'm choosing love today. I am walking the road. Heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing love today. I'm choosing beauty today. I'm choosing beauty today. I am walking the road of heaven right now, singing, I'm choosing beauty today.
turning your clocks up. <laughs> I don't know, why do we keep doing that? And why does it keep getting earlier every year? Farming. Huh? We've got to be farming. You know, I think the, the cows go by the light. I don't think they go by the clock. I, I'm just saying. I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm glad that you're here. Those of us who aren't here probably did not set our clocks up, or we're out doing something in the sun. <laughs> Isn't the sun amazing? Yes. We are such appreciators, aren't we? That's We really are. And it's going to be like this today, and it's going to be like this tomorrow, and then Tuesday it's going to rain. Of course. So what do we focus on? Shall we focus on that Tuesday it's going to rain, or that today it's going to be beautiful, and tomorrow it's going to be beautiful? What are we going to look at? Because you have people in your life when you say, Oh, it's such a beautiful day. And someone goes, yeah, but it's going to rain on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, so it rains on Tuesday. But can we just be here and present and enjoy the sun we have today? Right? Yeah, right. 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 So a little while ago, a few weeks ago, I came upon this little book. It's a little Unity published book. And it's called Favorite Unity Radio Talks. Have you ever seen that? No. no. I had never seen it before either. It was published in 1950. Wow. And it's a compilation of, as you know, Unity has had radio broadcasting for years and years, and they do today. And if you're not familiar with it, I highly recommend you go to the Unity website. And um, it's called Unity FM, I think it's what they call it. And uh, they always just have round the clock either beautiful music or positive talks you know, meditations, all kinds of stuff. It's wonderful. If you would just like a moment to kind of raise the vibration, that's a good place to go to do it. And these are talks that were printed from, that have been um, over the years uh, as members of different ones of the talks that they've done. And they have several ones here. And there was one, I was looking at the table of contents, and there was one called self-confidence. And so I opened up to that. And it says, if you are in trouble, ill, needing funds, suffering an aching heart, I say to you, be of good cheer. This is the assurance that Jesus gave to the man made helpless by palsy, to the woman who trembling touched the hem of his garment, to the disciples when the boat in which they were riding was distressed by the waves. Jesus promised, Lo, I am with you always, right where you are, whatever your circumstances or need, I am here. Be of good cheer. And I stopped to think about that because, in a way, be of good cheer sounds like be of good cheer. And it's kind of, it's, it's sort of Pollyanna ish, isn't it? Be of good cheer. <laughs> what does he mean by that, be of good cheer? All this stuff's going on, and then he says, be of good cheer? I mean, really? But the truth is, is that is what's required. Do we understand that? Do we get it? And it's, and it's very applicable today in our world that seems pretty weird and crazy. Be of good cheer? Mm, what does that mean? Does that mean to deny what's going on in the world? No. Is that what that means, be of good cheer? No. no. It doesn't mean to deny what's going on. What it's actually saying to us, it's calling us, it's an invitation for us to open up to our hearts, to the truth of us, where we are connected to source, where the only way things are going to change is from that connection. Right? 
So be of good cheer is a reminder that we need to be connected to that truth of us, that love of us, that joy of us, that peace of, of, of us. It's required. Well, Joanna, that's nice. How do we get to that? How do we do that? I mean, it sounds good. How do we do that? And when I was reading through this, this little chapter in this uh, book, it's talking about the, that the way we do it is with faith. That's what faith is. That when Jesus said, be of good cheer, or any of the master teachers tell us, because they all tell us to do this, is to be the, in, connected in oneness with the truth of who we are, that takes faith. It is what we believe is what we create. Is that true? Uh -huh. yes. Is that been your experience? That's the good news and the bad news, isn't it? And, and you've heard me say this before. It isn't what we want to believe or what we should believe or what we believe as we walk out of this morning and it's a gorgeous day and we've just had a great time together and we walk out and it's, oh, yes. That's not the belief we're talking about. It's the belief we have when we're sitting at the stoplight or we're in the ferry line and we miss the ferry and have to wait for the next one. That does, does that ever happen to you? Oh. Um, or, or, you know, at 2 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. It's what you believe then. That's what we're creating, what's really in there, what we're holding as true all the time. That's what we're creating. And Jesus said, and all the master teachers say, by your faith, so it is for you. That's what your experience is. So if we're looking at the world and going, oh boy, I don't know. It's looking pretty bad. It's looking pretty weird. There's, there's nothing wrong with, with sharing, having your feelings about how it all looks. But don't spend a lot of time there. Get back to the truth of you and, and, and be looking at what do you believe. Do you believe that it's ultimately going to be okay? Is that your heart of hearts understanding? And one of the ways you can tell if it is your heart of heart understanding it's what's happening in your experience. What are the circumstances that are coming up for you? What's happening in your life? Do you get the connection of that? Do you see how important it is? So when Jesus was saying, be of good cheer, what he was talking about is, be connected to the truth of you, folks. Questions or comments about that? Anybody? Yeah. I found my, I found myself I found myself this morning feeling yuck and I said to somebody, uh, I'm sick. And that's as soon as I said that I was like, no, cancel. My my body, this body is sick. I'm great. You know. The truth of me is fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. And it may be that your body's using a cold. My body's using a cough right now. I have this little tickling cough. I don't have anything else going on, but there's just this little tickling cough. <coughs> Excuse me. But, but um, it's like my body's using that to, to remove some energetics and stuff that needs to go, some stuff that's ready to go inside. inside. But if there's a part of me that believes, oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what's our experience and see here's the thing is that our experience proves what we believe so then we continue to believe it right so it's this kind of vicious circle isn't it that keeps going around and we have to intercede we have to intercept that circle and that means we've got to do some deep sea diving, my friends. This isn't just a surface thing, and it isn't something we can do while we're, while we're on the computer or we're on the phone or we're looking at we're watching something on the screen, on the phone, and texting at the same time. 
the moon won't find it. We won't get there. So, thank you, dear. So this requires some deep sea diving. You get what I mean by that? Yep. This requires some looking in the mirror. I know, you hate when I say that. Because <laughs> I always say that. Our new friends, I say that all the time. Because that's where the answers are. And that's the place we least like to look, isn't it? Well, you two, you're so beautiful, you probably don't oh. hesitate, but <laughs> it's not my favorite place to look. Oh. But indeed, that's the connection that has to be made. That's where the deep sea diving takes place, inside ourselves. And we have to keep reminding each other because we live in a culture that keeps telling us that it's about everything else but that. Right? And so you and I have to be reminded, <coughs> excuse me, remind each other of it. And so when I look in here and, and open up to this and, and the chapter about self-confidence, it says, it is the will of the Christ that you shall prove him in every phase of your life, that every body, <laughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, that every body cell shall be perfect in wholeness, that every thought of your mind, every desire of your heart shall be productive of good, that each step of your life's pathway may be clear, clearly illumined by the light of divine wisdom, and your environment may be blessed by order, beauty, peace, and harmony. Whatever your prob problem may be today, try to lift your heart in thanksgiving and be of good cheer. All things are possible to you. You are not alone in your endeavor. Christ abides in you to help you overcome, to enable you to fulfill God's will. There is no handicap, no weakness, no error, no fear that can withstand the power of Christ within you. Do you get that? Yes. That's good. That's, good. That's the truth of us. That's the truth. And if it isn't happening for you, is it... Have you ever seen that sign that says, if, um, if you and God aren't connected, who moved? <laughs> That's the variable. Because God, divine essence, divine love, whatever you name, excuse me, that essence of life, that is who we are. And if it's not, doesn't show up in your life as order, beauty, peace, and harmony in your life, then who moved? <laughs> right? The variable is us, what we're holding as true. And that's where the faith comes in. Because there are times when it doesn't look good out there, where it doesn't feel good. This isn't about denial. You know, in unity... We talk about denials and affirmations, and unity very often takes a hit where people are critical of unity because of the denial affirmation things, because, because they don't understand, people don't understand what we mean by denials and affirmations. That we're saying denials meaning that, oh, that's not happening. No, that is not what denials are about. Denials are about, yeah, that's happening but I'm not going to give it power over my life. I'm not going to deny that the Christ in me, that the love in me, that the connection I am to source is larger than all of it. And I affirm that that is the truth of me. And I affirm it especially right here, right now, in the midst of this whatever it is that's going on. That's what denial and affirmations are. And that's what in unity we call it affirmative prayer. Is saying that, denying that whatever this is, not that it's happening, but that it is not the all of me. Because I am connected to source. And source is the all of me. And source is also the all of whatever it is that's going on. Questions or comments? It reminds me of Mary Matamora. Morrissey. <clears throat> years ago she had 
had these uh, cans, and it was a God can, and it was like a little bank, and you'd write your problem, and there was like a tape that went with it that said, you drop it in there, but you can't get it back out, and so it's like, God is bigger than any of my problems that I put in here, and it was a God can, God <laughs> can do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Contained. It's contained. And that all of life, all things are possible all around it. But it's our faith in that. It's our belief in that. We hold the key by what we're holding as true. If, <coughs> excuse me, if we believe that we are inside the can with the situation, whatever it is, it's really, it, that, that's the definition of hell. Is it not? Yep. If I put myself inside the can... I'm in hell. Yes, Marilyn. <laughs> What's coming up for me for some time now? The thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. The law of mind yeah. action. Absolutely. Yeah. I have a hand in this. If God is everywhere, there's no place for him to move to. So it's only, I mean, you know, it's like the air. You know, that's, it, God can't move because he's everywhere. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I love what Reverend Michael would always say, <coughs> that pain is a given. Suffering is optional. <laughs> That's a good distinction. It's a really important distinction. And so how do we apply that then to our world, what we're seeing in our world, what we're experiencing in our world? Does it apply? Well, of course it applies. And what we've talked about in the past is, is that there's more love on this planet than ever. And what does love do? What does love always do? Is it goes and seeks everything unlike itself and brings it to the surface to be healed, to make room for more love. Have you had that happen in relationships? Mm -hmm. Two people come together and they love, love, love uh. each other. Uh. <laughs> and what happens? Often. <laughs> they get to know each other. Yeah. And what, come, what comes forth is all the stuff that needs to be healed so that there can be more love. And very often, it's what takes the relationship down. Or, or the people point at it and go, well, see, we weren't meant to be together. Or it doesn't have to just be in partnerships uh, between two people in a romantic partnership. It can be between parent and child, friends. Co-workers, absolutely, <laughs> with bosses, with, with any, all relationships. When we come together in love, love seeks out, it, it looks for it. Not to make anything wrong, not to judge, but to allow to come forth that which is unlike it. And isn't that what's happening in our world in a huge way? We're seeing things we never imagined we would see. But it's time for the light, a light to be shown so that we can go, oh, is this who we really are? Oh, we're, we're declaring this, but look what's really happening. Is this who we really are? Is this okay? Is this okay? How about this? Is this okay? And we get, continue to get opportunities to change, to do it differently, to make a different choice. Often we don't. We continue to do the same thing. And then sometimes I wonder, wow, I wonder what needs to happen for us to say, okay, uh, okay, I get it, I get it, enough. It's like, wow, what has to happen? But you see, the way we look out there and we see it globally, but it's no different than what's happening inside us moment to moment with the choices that we're making for ourselves and for those in our lives. It's no different. It's, this is a microcosm of the macrocosm, right? I just wrote that this morning. Yeah, there you go. Questions or comments about that? That's, that's the analogy I always use, is to how we're just a microcosm of the macrocosm. And that like with healing, when people make a choice that they want to get healthy or healing or maybe book a session, and they'll say, God, ever since I did that, it seems like everything's gone wrong. It's like everything starts coming up unlike the help that they're seeking to be healed. And so what do we do? Oh, gosh, no, now this isn't working because 
more stuff is coming up. Yeah, absolutely. And see, when we stand up here and we talk about this, it seems pretty straightforward, doesn't it? It seems pretty simple. Why is it so hard? Well, one of the huge reasons, my friends, is that traditionally religion has pretty much had it backwards. That only if God is merciful and God is judging us from the left hand and the right hand, and there's all this judgment going on, and only if God is merciful will we be saved. That there's this merciful God that needs to happen, and you never know if God's going to do it because God is completely unpredictable. <laughs> and he's codependent <laughs> and gets angry. You just never know. Right? Mm. That's the God that we collectively have held. It's up there, out there somewhere. Writing it down. And that we're being judged. And the whole of religion, uh, most of religion, is kind of based on that thinking, isn't it? Yeah. And it's, it's, not, it's not that we're, we're not saying it's, it's bad or, you know, pointing fingers or anything. And we've all, to some extent, moved through that. We've all been through there to something more. And we all will go through there to something more. We're just, everyone is where they are. God said, all roads lead home, and it takes as long as it takes. But it's time for us to understand as conscious beings, there is no judgment by God. God knows who we are already. We're the ones who get confused. We don't have to prove anything to the divine. We are the divine in physical expression. And it's our acceptance, our awareness and acceptance of that that allows us to open up and let the divine use this vehicle and that vehicle and that vehicle to have more love on this planet, more healing. It's the vehicle, it's the vessels by which the healing takes place. The balancing of energy, if you will. Does that make sense? Does that ring true for you? Mm -hmm. Questions yeah. or comments about that? It's something I was just writing about again, too, at a part of class that I'm going to do. And it's like, where do you give your power? And people have given their power out there, whether it's to God or a healer or a doctor or an attorney or whatever. Instead of using the expertise and taking it in and saying, is that true? For well, me? absolutely. And as again, because we live in a culture that's about that the power is out there. That's how they sell stuff. It's out there. It isn't about what's in here. In fact, we were raised to believe that it's not okay to think we're powerful. It's not okay to feel strong inside. We've heard messages from the time we're little kids. Most of us, many of us, some of us, lots of us, all of us. <laughs> That's not okay. Your dreams are not okay. Sit down. Be quiet. You're rocking the boat. Don't rock the boat. <laughs> right? Those, those inspirations that come from within have been squashed for a lot of us for maybe most of us. And those of us who do step out there, we get criticized and judged and laughed at and made fun of and all of that for being different, for having the courage to step out there, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it hasn't been easy on this planet. We haven't made it easy for ourselves or each other, but that doesn't change the truth of us. And that's the opportunity that we have as conscious beings, is to open up to that truth of us again. Because it was always there. And that's the good news. That's the promise. That's why we can be hopeful about what we're seeing. Because no matter what's going on, and no matter who's in charge, and no matter what's happening, ultimately, it's going to come around to the truth of us. And how it gets there more quickly is for each one of us to accept it within. That tips the balance. 
Why? Because we're all one. We're all connected. We're not separate from those folks over there who are doing that or saying that. We're not separate from anybody. They can only, only do what we all have room for in us at some level, even if it's just a little bit. Do you realize that? Did you get that? Whatever's going on in our world can only occur because all of us have room for it somewhere inside. Have you thought of it like that? Now, that's not a make wrong. Don't hear, it's not about a judgment. It's just telling us that there's more opening to do, there's more forgiving to do, there's more letting go to do. Right? Right. right. Yep. It isn't a make wrong. We don't need any more make wrong. We've had too much make wrong. <coughs> it's about saying, okay, I see it. Because again, if you want to know if you're really holding faith in divine essence and the truth of us, and you really get it, then your world is about peace and love and harmony. It have to be, right? Right. And you may have moments like that. You probably do. Do you have it continuously? Well, if you do, you should be giving this talk. <laughs> <laughs> I have moments, and I have plenty of time where I forget. And I feel small, and I feel limited. And I look outside myself for validation. Do you do that? Mm -hmm. And the only place that the validation really exists is in here. And that's why there's never enough. And that's why we're needy. And that's why we pull on our relationships. Am I okay? Am I okay? I need you to show up like this so that I can feel like I'm okay. But there's never enough, is it? It's never enough. It couldn't be enough because we're looking in the wrong place. Do you see? And we and we we drag or suck the life out of relationships doing that until we realize it isn't over there. That validation has to be in here. And have you noticed that you're the most critical of others? when you're feeling the smallest inside? Yeah. And that's a good that's a good red light. And I've said this before, you know, when I notice, well, look at that. Does she really, should she be out in public with that one? I mean, really? Did you see her hair? Oh, my God. <laughs> When I'm doing the most of that kind of stuff, I may not be saying it, but I might be thinking it. I have that's a, that's a light bulb that goes on. It says, "Oh, I'm feeling really small today. I'm feeling really small. I'm feeling really less than today." And if we can stay in touch with that inside ourselves, it helps a lot. It isn't about making myself wrong. Oh, Joanna, there you go again. No, it's like, oh, thank you, thank you. Pull it, rein it back in, pull it back in. Blessing everybody. And isn't that amazing that that person has the strength and courage to go out there? Good for them. Good for them. Good for them. Questions or comments? What it brings to mind is around um, just... Recently, I heard the comment, always thinking that public speaking or fire or whatever are our greatest fears. And really, it's change. Even though it's what we seek, we want the familiar, we want the comfortableness, until we get so uncomfortable with our uncomfortableness. So it's both change in ourselves and change in others. As much as we seek it, we fear it. Because well, yeah. we have to let go. Well, so, because so. That's, a, that's a sign of the ego. The ego hates change. It hates anything it doesn't have files on, and so it makes it wrong, doesn't it? 
Doesn't want, and so it will. If I got files on that, uh, no. <laughs> don't do it, don't do it. Yeah. Morris. Thanks for reminding us that we, that we can choose to open up to the truth of us. Mm -hmm. We can choose. It is totally a choice. That's the thing. The divine loves us so much that it allows us to choose our way home. And it takes as long as it takes. That's love. Yeah. And that power is in us, and that power was given to us by God. Hello. Yeah. We look at it like self-will, you know, like we have the you know, old, old Testament or, or whatever teaching him that we have self-will, but that's, we can, oh, and then along the same line, in what's hollering at me daily from readings I do in the Course in Miracles, I can always choose, choose to look at things differently. It's up to me. Yeah. Because I am God's, as each of us is, God's beloved. God gave us that Absolutely. In, in our creation. Yeah. One of the, <laughs> the biggest lies that there, that there is <coughs> is this, the, the belief that I don't have a choice. Right. We always have a choice. We're always choosing. Even when we're not choosing, we're choosing. <laughs> right? We're choosing not to choose. We're choosing not to choose. <laughs> We are always, every moment of existence, choosing. If nothing else, we're choosing to still be here in this life. That's the least and the greatest of what we're doing, right? So this idea that there's no choice, or this idea that traditional religion is, here's the rules, and you live by the rules, and you'll be saved. Oh my goodness sake. <laughs> and a lot of people don't choose to, they, they just want the rules because they don't want to have any responsibility. They want to be able to blame it on someone or something else. See, when you found out that you have the power to create and recreate your life. It was both the good news and the bad news, wasn't it? You have the power, yes, thank goodness. And you have the power, oh no. You mean I can't blame it on somebody else? No. It's not somebody else's fault. It surely was my parents' fault. It was my sister's fault. It was my perpetrator's fault. My abuser's fault. Well, okay. But what are you going to do now? Are you going to still live as the abused? As the victim? Because at this point, if you're still walking that walk, who's abusing you now? You. Exactly. It's not that person. And that's not to, mi to minimize what we have experienced. I'm not saying that. It was horrendous. Not saying that. What I am saying is, so who are you now? Who are you now? Are you still living as the abused? Because if you are, then the next question is, where is your faith? Are you living the belief that life is happening to you? Because what we come to understand is that life is happening through us by what we're holding as true, by what our faith is. Do you believe that you're always going to lose, that you're always going to come at the short end of the stick? Is that your belief? Well, here, you won't think I'm not much of a psychic. I can, I can promise you what your experience will be. The short end of the stick. <laughs> Right? And then you'll say, see, I told you. <coughs> right? <coughs> yeah. That's the cycle we have to break. And we do that with the one in the mirror, not with anybody else. That's not to say 
that you can't go to healers, you can't go to practice. Of course you can, and you can get great help. But make sure it is in concert with, in tandem with, the work that you're doing with the one in the mirror. Because if you're doing you're not, that work out there is only going to go so far. Do you get that? And any good practitioner is going to tell you that. It's going to point you in here. If they're not, leave. <laughs> yeah. Questions or comments? What's that song? Uh, something about, I got a new attitude? I got a new attitude? Oh, it's a song from a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the, there's a lot of good lines in it, but I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I know the song you're talking about. It's either if you say you can, or you say you can't, you're right. Thoughts held in mind. There you go. <laughs> you, absolutely. So that's where the choice is, my friends. What do we choose? What do we choose to hold as true? Have faith and go forward with high courage. With faith in God and courage in your heart, you will be able to meet all things. Faith and courage are your solution for all problems. They are great possessions, so hold on to them. It has been said that a quiet courage is man's greatest strength, is the ready companion of unshakable faith. If the way seems dark, faith is your guiding light. Hope and have faith and take new courage. Go forward knowing that all will be well with you, that every situation will become harmonious and will be adjusted for your highest good. This is possible. If you have much faith. You remember Jesus spoke about the faith of a mustard seed? <laughs> Can move mountains? I remember when I was young thinking about that. Really? Really? Have you ever proved it? Uh -huh. Many of us have in our lives. In a lot of different ways. It's my honor to be with you today. Enjoy the sunshine. Don't worry about the rain on Tuesday. <laughs> be, be with the sun on Sunday and Monday. Okay? Lots of blessings, everyone. Well, we didn't do meditation, did we? Let's just take a moment to breathe deep. Let's, let's breathe deep. And let, let's just exercise and breathe deep. And with every breath, Anything that is tense, that's tight, that's bothering you, just exhale, exhale it out. <coughs> because the truth of you is that you're more than this thing, whatever it is. So just exhale it out. Take a few deep breaths. We maybe should do a groan here. I think I'm feeling like there's a groan. So let's do the groan. You know how we do that. I'll count to three, and then everybody just, oh, just make it nasty. Okay? <laughs> One, two, three. Oh. Oh. Yes. Doesn't that feel good? Yes. yes. Let's do it again. One, two, three. Oh. Oh. As we do that, we open up and make more room for the radiance of the truth of us. And right now, that radiance is being reflected back to us as this beautiful morning sun. So let's allow it in, that it comes up from within and bubbles up. And we're also opening the doors and windows to let it come back to us. The radiance of this beautiful light. Let it warm you. Let it sparkle in you. Let it lift you. Oh, that feeling, that feeling when you go outside the first time without a coat. <laughs> oh, it feels so good. It's like a freedom, isn't it? Feel that. Opening the doors and windows, being reminded that we are much larger than the challenges.
because we're connected to divine source. And so we open the doors and windows, allowing that truth and the faith in that truth to come forth, to transform, to transmute any negativity, any wounds, any sorrows, any pain. It isn't about denying it. It's about embracing it with the truth of us. And there may be someone you know who could really use this support right now, who could use this reminder right now, who could use this embrace right now with whatever's going on for them. And if, if it feels comfortable to you, say their name aloud so that we can hold them with you. And for our spiritual community, and for our community at large, our state, our country, our planet, every life form that in this moment of now, every form of life is lifted up. Because we're all one, and for this reminder, we are grateful. And so it is. Amen. We do have one more new person that um, wasn't recognized as Laura in the back. Put your hand up, Laura. Welcome. This is her first time here. <laughs> this is a really nice little spring song. Inch by inch, row by row. Gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless the seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Pulling weeds and picking stones. Man is made of dreams and bones. Feel the need to grow my own, cause the time is close at hand. Plant your rows straight and long, thicken them with prayer and song. Mother Earth will make you strong if you give her love and care. this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone bless the seeds I sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. In my garden, I'm as free as a feather beak up there. Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, 
Someone bless the seeds I sow. Someone warn them from below till the rain comes tumbling down. Thank you. So now it's time for our offertory and candle lighting. And as you prepare your tithes and love offerings today, think about how blessed you are. And as you're writing your check or giving your gift, send the blessings out. And there are candles that can be lit. And lit. <laughs>
part of that song years ago, The Bluest Skies You'll Ever See Are in Seattle. <laughs> and that was a great song, but it was just because we appreciate it more. Yes, amen. I give willingly, joyfully, and lovingly the knowing that God is the constant source of my supply. I give it with graciousness and receive it with gratitude. Time for our food for life bag. Is there anybody that would like to take the bag home and fill it? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Then we bring it back to uh, we'll feed the homeless. Yes. Thank you. We you know they'll be back. Yes. <laughs> on Friday <clears throat> and the background on that is I've been on eye drops for uh, since 97 <clears throat> I have glaucoma mm. and so over time we kept trying to control the pressure with eye drops more and more drops <clears throat> and uh, they came out with a new uh, procedure it's minimally surgically invasive so we had it done on both my eyes and uh, as of Friday, I'm drop free. Yeah. 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 All right. I saw oh, another hand good. in the back of my eye. <laughs> well, I just think it's good news it's going to rain on Tuesday. Those of us that have our rain barrels ready, we can start capturing water for our gardens. Yes. Yes. All right. There you go. That's right. Plants are yes. Yep. Tracy. <clears throat> Um, it's been a long journey, um, but I um, went to go see my doctor week and a half ago, and um, for the first time in 25 years, I weigh under 300 pounds. Wow. Yay! Yay. Oh, right. Oh, right. Um, I have gone down in pant size, Yes. and um, the next time I go into weigh will be um, the end of May. And she wants me to then lose another 20 pounds so I can be 280 or under, which is completely doable. And um, so I am for the first time in 25 years. And you know, Tracy, it's because of you that I belong to the Y and I work out and walk more because you are such my inspiration. Oh, and I'm going to predict that it's not going to rain on Tuesday. We're <laughs> 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 ready for it. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm very excited because prayer works. This uh, gal I went into the Perry Avenue Kitsap um, Public Market Mall uh, mm -hmm. a couple months ago and talked with a gal and stuff. Well, I went in there a couple weeks ago and she said, I have been praying and praying for you to come back because she wanted me to teach um, teach there and to do some classes and she has the space. So I have been wanting to have a place mm -hmm. to do that. So I'm going to start teaching some classes, doing some readings and, and things there. Um, so if you want to know more on what that will be about, it will be kind of a basis around why people don't heal and how they can. Wonderful. 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 Okay, and then um, there will be somebody over, probably myself over there, in the near to where James is in the sunshine, or Anne, to um, pray if you have any need for prayer or giving thanks and affirming the good. And now we'll stand and we'll take a hand into our song. Hey, come on. Come
Creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally.